Hello. I'm going to read this comment to you from Video Guy NC. He says, and incidentally, this is about I, I put up a video switching to Linux permanently, and one of the things I noted was the fact that um, viruses. You know, you don't get near as many. I think I misspoke, though, because I probably said that you don't get viruses at all. Um, basically, what Video Guy NC says is that any popular uh, operating platform, including cell phone OS versions, is going to be vulnerable to viruses because the virus writers want to target the largest number of people with the least amount of trouble. There are more and more Mac viruses coming into light, and I suspect that Linux ga as Linux gains in popularity, it will become a target as well. Anything that man can make, man can break. And I wrote in response, basically, is that, um, I will admit that it is not impossible to get viruses on Linux, and that I probably misspoke in the video. However, the number is far fewer in Windows, um, like Ed Vinnack had said he had four viruses in six years. Compare that to the average Windows user getting who knows how much. Also remember, since it is open, the odds of a virus being patched quick, um, patched quicker are a lot better than in Windows. And it also, my aunt works with Linux in her job, and she said the only reason people even write viruses for Windows to begin with is because of the fact that you have to pay for it, basically out of frustration from Microsoft, and X3N0NFR4N agrees. And um, I wanted to expand on this, and let me just say that um, one of the reasons Linux... Um, now, Linux is vulnerable, okay? Any operating system is vulnerable. The question is how vulnerable. Even if the user base had increased, you need to understand that in Redmond, Washington, United States of America, we have only hundreds of people working with Windows. Compare that to the millions of people around the globe that are using Linux. And Linux is a lot more... Uh, noticeable in other countries than here in the United States. Why? Because Microsoft doesn't have as much of an influence on them as they do here in the States. The only reason most people use Windows is because Microsoft has literally forced us to do it by putting together agreements with the OEM manufacturers and forcing Windows to, go on, to come on every single computer you get. Um, with the exception, obviously, of the Macs. But, um... So Microsoft has pretty much forced Windows on us, whereas over in the other parts of the world, Linux is a lot more common. Also, because millions of people around the world work for on Linux, odds are that you will um, that um, a virus, if detected, will be patched a lot faster. And we need to look at the Linux hierarchy. The reason Windows has so many viruses, and I'm quoting uh, Dr. Glenn Gordon from Freedom Scientific, which is an assistive technology company, when they were looking at switching to Vista in, in uh, their way of doing things, basically speech output, he had said that historically Windows had run with very low privileges. In other words, um, very low privilege settings. In other words, anybody could, mo anybody could modify it. Or excuse, um, I think I have, oh shoot, now I'm twisting my words around. Well, suffice it to say, the reason Windows is so vulnerable is because anybody can alter it. Okay? Whereas in Linux, here's how the hierarchy works. You have to be root to do pretty much anything. This includes, um, this includes moving a file. This includes, um, Actually, I don't know if moving has to be a sudo, but you do have to have the sudo command to remove it. And that is if you're working in the terminal. But for a graphical user, um, essentially, you have to provide an administrative password to do everything. 
from installing to removing applications to partitioning your hard drive to even changing the time. You cannot change the clock and date on your computer without providing an administrative password. So if a virus were to be detected, you would have an alert saying this application wishes to run, do you want to run it? Um, and essentially the way Linux is set up, what I'm saying is you cannot run the application unless you literally tell Linux to do it. So um, even if the viruses were to increase, the hierarchy makes it such that Linux would not execute the virus on its own. Um, it would ask you first. That's number one. Number two, we need to remember there are millions of people running Linux all over the world compared to and working on it compared to hundreds of people working on Windows in Redmond, Washington in the United States. Mm, excuse me. Pardon. Um, and so I, I the the hierarchy millions of people working on it around the world um what was the third point oh the third point um one of the points i was going to make was um like i said people write viruses for windows simply because they're mad at microsoft and i don't blame them because with linux here's what you get for free operating system office suite video editing tools, instant messaging, you know? Antivirus you can even get for free. Um, with Windows, you have to pay $200 for the operating system, $150 for the office suite, so that's $350 out of, out of the box, $60 to $100 for antivirus, so that's like $400, $450 out of the box, and then, of course, there's the computer that's even more expensive than that. You know? So, essentially, with Linux, all you do is buy the hardware. The software is completely free of charge. It's open to everyone. And because it's open to everyone, even if there was a virus um, issue, odds are that it would be squelched a lot faster on Linux than on Windows. And again, the hierarchy is such that you cannot execute the virus um, without actually telling Linux to do so. And again, like I said, like my aunt said, um, you, the reason a lot of people run, write viruses for Windows has to do with the fact that they have to pay money for it and they are frustrated with Microsoft because of the way things are run and so forth. But Linux overall is fantastic. Is it completely virus-free? No. But the odds of being there being a severe infection that could literally damage your system to the point of irreparability are significantly less. In fact, I'd say more than, um, you would be more than twice as likely, more than four times as likely even, to get a virus to destroy your system on Windows than you would on Linux. And again, this goes back to the points of it being, um, you have to tell the system to do it, uh, you have to, um, you know, you have to understand that there are millions of people working on Linux versus hundreds on Windows, and also the fact that it is open and that there are, um, and that it's a lot quicker to get a virus squelched on Windows than it is on Linux. Sorry, I, I was speaking a little faster. What I meant to say was it's a lot faster to go, get a virus squelched on Wind on Linux than it is on Windows, okay? It is a lot faster to get a virus squelched on Linux than it is on Windows because the odds of getting a response team are faster. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.